welcome to the Irish Hills here in Michigan as we are getting ready for the NRT 400 here at the Michigan International Speedway. It's been about two weeks probably since I've put a race out. Sorry, I've been kind of stuck on a, another video game that I've been that's been kind of taking my attention away. But I'm not about to turn into a Dylan Pochi or Trent Dunham. Yes, shots fired. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm not alone. I'm being joined up here by the guy who's starting in fifth place, Seth Cole. Seth, thank you for joining me up here in the booth. Hey, glad to be here. And yeah, you may not turn into a Dylan Pochi or a Trent Dunham. You may turn into a Jeff Goldblum, but, you know, that's about as bad as it'll get. <laughs> yeah, right? Where I just ramble on and on and on and go off script and just keep talking and talking and talking. There's a wreck in for... Oh, wait, no, this is an argument. Never mind. <laughs> All right, as we're getting things set here, Dylan Young, two-time winner on the pole, alongside Shane Lake in second place. You know, this this race track uh, comes down to a lot of fuel strategy, but also may come down to the cautions because these cars like to get pretty wild when the green flag drops. Well, not only that, I mean, you're right, this track can hold them three wide, sometimes four wide, but also, this is one of the more difficult two-mile racetracks to get onto pit road. Uh, you carry so much speed through the center of the corner that you usually, when you slam on the brakes, you end up having your car drift up the track a little bit there. So you have to be right down on the bottom of the track to make a safe entry into pit road, and a lot of times, drivers won't see that hand signal out the windshield indicating you're coming to pit road, they might run you over. I've seen several times here at Michigan where the green flag pit stops that usually take place here end up being where we see usually our first caution of the day. Yep, so we're going to see as these cars pull off pit lane and onto the racetrack. Joshua Sakuli is our points leader. He, he lost it for like two races, I believe, and but uh, ended up getting it back almost immediately, especially after his win at in the Cook 600 last week, where he had probably the most dominant car of the race. But, um, it's going to be 40 laps of racing here at, here in Michigan, as you see these cars coming off of turn two, going to head down, going to go down the back straightaway. I don't know, I'm excited for this. Yeah, I know, and a lot of times, too, when you come to a track like Michigan, even when you go to a lot of those wide mile-and-a-half tracks, usually track position doesn't mean a whole lot. If you've got a fast car, you can work your way from the rear of the field, mid-pack, up to the front. But, I mean, you look at our front row here. you got Dylan Young, two-time winner, Shane Lake, who is, I believe, right now around eighth in the rookie points, but he's 12th overall, 12th overall in the standings, Dylan Young 11th. So these two have had actually pretty consistent years. Dylan looking for win number three, Shane looking for win number one. But, I mean, obviously they've got fast cars because they were able to qualify their way onto the front row. But don't necessarily know if starting up front is going to mean they're going to take the checkered flag. They might have to roll some strategy here. Yep, they probably will as they're coming off of turn number four. Pace car heads to pit lane. Seth, take it away. All right, we're going to get ready to go racing here in the Irish Hills. Maybe some lucky charms for somebody. Dylan Young, Shane Lake, bring them down. And we're green flag racing in Michigan. Everybody's taking the green flag, so nobody's sitting on pit lane or anything. That's a battle for first place as Ace Garcia in the 96 car. Pushes Dylan Young, hopefully trying to get him around the 37. You saw the 13 of Igor Barreto be the first one to dive down to the inside three wide through turn one. Now, the reason that a lot of drivers fanned out to the inside line really quickly into turn one is that outside line, when rubber starts getting laid down, it's going to get a lot of momentum off turns two and four. So they want to get as much positions picked up on that inside line as early as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You saw the two of Dylan Young right there. You saw him going into turn one, how he kind of migrated to the top, and then that allowed him to be able to drive it down deep into turns one and two. Allowed that two car to carry a lot of speed, but here comes Garcia. Garcia down the inside line. He's going to take the lead through turn number four. We've got the 72 car. That's Jake Smith. Uh, Neil Baldwin up here, Jess, Jessica Shelton, you got Josh Drake up here, a bunch of cars. And you're also, 
You're also going to see here during the course of this race, too, if they do manage to go green for a majority of it, you're going to see drivers who have their cars set up for the short run, cars that are set up for the long run. Now, we're seeing the two of Dylan Young has faded back to about fifth. That car looked really tight through three and four on the top side, so something tells me he may have that car set up for the long run as he wasn't able to hang on to the lead. It's very possible. You know, you never know what you're going to get. In a, when, it, when it comes to a long run or a short one because you don't know when the caution's going to fall, if it even does. O'Neill Balvin there, he's been making some strides towards the front. He's now going to the inside of Jake Smith. That'd be for second. That's for, uh, actually, that's Jessica Shelton. I'm sorry, yeah, he was, he actually was to the inside of Jake Smith, but Smith apparently got a good run on the straightaway, and he really gapped the 18, and you see Shelton using the outside line as well. So there was a battle for second, but Balvin way down on the bottom, was not able to get any forward momentum and lost two spots as a result. And a battle for the lead here, side by side, that's going to allow that 94 car to get up here as well, possibly three wide as, they, as they're going to go off into turn number one. But here comes Baldwin, going to go the inside, three wide for second. I noticed off turn four, Jake Smith kind of ran Ace Garcia up the track, ran him out of room. A lot of times when you're doing pinching to try and stop forward momentum, it's the outside car doing to the inside car. Here at Michigan, that inside car wants to drift up, all, not quite make contact, but get close to try and slow down the momentum of that outside line off the corner. Yeah, it's very possible. So we're looking at our points leader here, Joshua Sekuli, running in the back. But then again, it's only lap Yeah, but five. I don't think... Yeah, it's not time to hit the panic button yet. I mean, there's still 35 laps to go as they hit the line here. And bear in mind, he's still up here in the pack, too. So it's not like he's lost touch with the group. It's not like he can't pick up positions. And maybe this team is realizing, hey, we've had a real consistent year. We've got a win in the bank last week at the Coke 600. Let's just ride around in case trouble breaks out. We've got time to be able to slow down, not involved in the wreck. Plus, we've got potential green flag pit stops where we can start picking up some spots when and if those pit stops take place. Absolutely, and here we're looking at per the person who's last place in points right now, that's Kyle Matthews, S3 Motorsports car. He's, he's, he's really been going downhill since the beginning of the season, but we're gonna definitely have to keep an eye out. As you saw a couple of cars hit the wall back there. I saw Elijah Gordon in the wall, and I think the 34 definitely got into it as well, as he's losing a lot of spots now. Yeah, I remember we saw the two of Dylan Young a while ago actually try entering turn one up as high as he could. Well, there's a fine line between entering at just the right point on the high side or scraping the wall. And I think that uh, both Gordon and Trey Wright ended up uh, crossing that threshold. And that kills some of your momentum going into the corners. We saw the 34 lost about three or four spots through turn one. Speaking of Dylan Young, he's all the way back now in the 24th position after starting on the pole. And I don't know if maybe he got in the wall or not, but the 70 car of James Qualls looks like he's got a little bit of right side damage on that uh, Ford Travel Motor Coach Chevrolet. So does Seth Cole on that 98 car. It's right yeah. Just, so I think that I think there's been a couple of drivers that have crossed that threshold on the entry to turn one and have scraped that outside safer barrier. And as we were talking about S3 Motorsports a little bit ago, Jessica Shelton with the lead and Charles Sanford, teammate, going for second. Yeah, both those cars looking really, really good. And then you got Jonathan Zorlin there in the five as well. So you got the Chevy Camaros all of a sudden coming to the front as we saw the Ford of Dylan Young out front earlier. And this is going to be kind of interesting here because uh, Shelton and Sanford, both of them kind of struggling in the point stand. I think the highest running S3 Motorsports car in the points is Sanford in 18th. So, you know, which one of these two drivers wants that trip to victory lane more? Sanford's already got a win, but I mean... You know, with, with the kind of system we've got here, multiple wins almost guarantees you're going to make it into the playoffs, or into the chase in this case. Absolutely. As you see, Jess yield the lead to her, to her teammate. Now, the draft really comes into play in this at, at this racetrack. You know, even with the, with the aero package that these drivers have, the draft really comes into play. Absolutely right. No doubt about that. I mean, you go to tracks like Michigan, you go to Indianapolis, obviously we don't see them running three wide several rows deep, but this track and other speedways that are lengthy like this, so dependent on aerodynamics and so dependent on that draft. You see right there how the five pulled right up to the back bumper of the 94, got himself the forward momentum, now does the slingshot into turn one. You can just see how much momentum he gains on that bottom line. And, and I'm kind of surprised here too because um, normally – 
as the race progresses, that outside line gets good momentum on both corners of the racetrack. Looks like the high side's really only working off turn four. That inside line's got some good momentum in one and two. Yeah, it does. You know, we're 11, we're 11 12 laps into this race. I'm, I don't quite think the top lane has rubbered up yet. I know in one and two that Sh Shelton had to back off because I think her car was going to get tight and walk off the track. So she backed off a little bit. That's what allowed Sanford to kind of pull away like he did. But, um, yeah, the outside the outside lane not really working. Charles Stanford, he's already won a race. He's looking for his second a second win of the season. So we're just kind of scrolling through the back of the pack here. Here's Tony Green in the 62 car. A rookie running running pretty good here. Last in the sixth sixth position is Trent Dunham, who's worked his way up from the from about the mid from the mid pack here. Yeah, Green and Dunham both. Uh, Green started this race 17th. Trent Dunham actually started this race outside the top 25. So a great run for him early in this. And both drivers running well in the points, too. Tony Green's 10th in points. Trent Dunham's 7th. So both these drivers running very consistently. Who knows? Maybe if we have those green flag pit stops, those two might be in the conversation for this win later on. It's possible. Very, very possible. As you see here, it's Shelton tried to go underneath the 94. Oh, because they're coming to pit lane. Come in the pit lane. Oh, look, yeah. the look at this. Off. Now, this is interesting because this begs the question, is this as far as they can make it on fuel, or does this make them be able to get within their fuel window to make it to the end? If this is what I just said the first one, that this is as far as they can go, we're going to see them come to pit road yet another time before this checkered flag waves. Absolutely. Um, all the, uh, what I'm concerned with right now is coming off pit lane some sometimes these drivers like to get too wide and end up wrecking up into the track so well, I'll tell you also here I've had experiences at Michigan too where there's that paint line coming off of pit road separating the apron from the racetrack there is absolutely no grip there and you get two of your right side tires on that that thing loops around in the back straightaway so these drivers have to keep away from that paint line yeah so I'm gonna watch these drivers because I don't want them to like this, for instance, right there. Oh, wow, that was close. Josh Drake just in front of the 38 and almost got turned. Oh, this, we're going to have to watch this here. Kev Shearer. Mm -hmm. like don't wreck anybody else. You already you already have so many people that don't like you. Wise move on the part of the 34. Trey Wright to give up that spot. Ooh, <laughs> Benjamin Miles wants to get by Dylan Young. Second round right here coming out of pit lane. Zorline going to lead him out. Now, this will be interesting to see. I mean, the five was, I would oh. say, what, about maybe three car lengths behind the 0-3 of Sanford when Sanford came to pit road. So is Zorlin going to make up any ground on Sanford? Is he going to take the lead from Sanford? I mean, oh. both these drivers are running well, and there's your answer. <laughs> Zorline, uh, Sanford just passed Zorline with Shelton in second. So it's going to be kind of a gap, but I guess we'll see, because if these cars get in get into their draft, then that's going to be a very interesting thing. The draft's going to catch up slowly, so Charles Sanford's lead right now, which is probably about couple, uh, two seconds, I want to guess. Mm, I'd uh, say maybe a little more than that. About 2.4 seconds. That might not be such a good thing. Well, the only thing that right now Stanford has to worry about is if, let's say, Shelton is able to uh, get Jonathan Zorlin on her back bumper. Well, right now you've got actually uh, Jake Smith and Zorlin who are lined up. But, I mean, if those two can catch up to the 94, if they can get into a single file formation, they're definitely going to produce a lot more speed than the leader, Charles Sanford. But they're going to have to make sure that they stay single file and don't race each other because that's going to hurt their lap time. So right now, I think that the group that would produce speed and start making some forward momentum would be third and fourth place. So we saw these guys come, the first group of guys come down on lap 13 going on the 14. So if you think about 14 being an average lap, we'll see, we should see them on pit road at about lap 28 to 29. Yeah, it'll be somewhere within about uh, 12 to 13 laps to go. I mean, I don't know necessarily if maybe the fuel window is somewhere between 23 to 24 laps, and that's why they decided to come to pit road when they did. But I would kind of almost think not because everyone came to pit road. If that was the case where you could go 23 to 24 laps on fuel, 
I mean, why wouldn't you have some of these guys stay out and try and make it to lap 23? They all came to pit road within two laps of each other. So I think you're absolutely right. I think we are in for a second round of green flag pit stops, which uh, right now I think would definitely play into the hands of Charles Sanford because with the lead that he's got right now, he can kind of determine when he comes to pit road, and that might force everyone else's hands to try and do something different. It's true, and the gap grew a little bit. It was 2.4, now it's 2.7. Let's see what it is this time. It's three seconds exactly. Well, I mean, let's remember Charles Sanford's home track is Auto Club. He loves that track, and that track is, you know, not quite. A, it's a little bit wider, I guess, through the corners than it is here at Michigan, but about the same length, about the same configuration. So, no surprise. See Sanford doing well here at another two-mile track. And how about Trent Dunham? He was actually, I think, about uh, seventh place when the green flag pit stop cycled around. That one car has been producing a lot of speed, and I think he's actually been getting some help from the 9, 18, and 38 as well. So that might be the group right there that might be able to do something. The only question I have, though, is if they can make enough speed to get up to the front before we get to around lap 28 when we're expecting that second round of pit stops are going to take place. Well, I guess we'll I guess we'll see because um, at least this time Charles Sanford didn't have to wreck his teammate. Yeah, exactly. Hey, they're running one too, so you know it, it's still possible. That's, yeah, <laughs> that'll go over really well. And Charles Sanford just making the making it stretching out his lead. I mean, right now, I probably guarantee you the only thing that he's being told is getting a lap countdown of when he has to come to pit road. I think that radio would probably be really silent. I think right now all he's doing is he's out there running qualifying laps, bringing that car right down to the bottom of the track through one and two, letting it drift off the corner to get the speed off of turn two down the back straightaway. I mean, he's just hitting his marks, trying to continue to gap himself back to his teammate Shelton. Yeah. I mean... Let's see. Um, this this time by his last lap speed was a thirty five point nine zero. Jessica Shelton, thirty five point seven six. Yeah, and the only reason that she was about two tenths faster, you can see that five car of Zorlin is reeling her in. So that was kind of a little bit of aero push that allowed her to get a little bit faster. And now this is going to be interesting because now with Zorlin on her back bumper, you got Trent Dunham, Jake Smith back there as well. These guys, I think they could get lined up quickly enough before we get to that lap 28, lap 29 to at least be within striking distance of the 0-3 of Sanford. The question is, though, will they all be together when they come off of pit road or will they all be separated again? Because that could play a huge factor into whether or not Sanford is going to have to basically defend this race lead. That's very true. Shelton, the 5 and the 94 car back on the back bumper here is going to increase their speed. Look at them going about 205 right here into the corner, while Charles Sanford is barely getting 190. Yeah, that just shows you just how important it is with the draft to be in a pack. I mean, this is, and the interesting thing of it too is you see it more so at the speedways than you do at the super speedways. You can see, you know, two cars lined up trying to run down one car at a super speedway like Dega or Daytona, and they'll cut it down by about maybe a tenth, two tenths a lap. Here at a speedway, it's so much more obvious of how fast two cars are against one. The only thing I'm seeing right now, though, is the battle is on for second, and that's going to hinder these two in their uh, forward progress of running down Sanford for the lead. Yep. Let's see. The five car is going to... Take, or the five car is going to get second. Here comes Trent. I mean, maybe the five's a little bit faster than the 94, so maybe if he's at the front of this pack, they'll be able to make a little bit more ground up on Sanford. That time you saw right there, they lost two tenths to the race leader. Uh, the outside line working again here in turn two. The five car gets thrown off the corner. The one's going to settle back in third, and Shelton's is going to settle back in fourth. About three to four laps until we get into that fuel window again of about, what was it, 13, 14 laps that they were able to make it on fuel the first round of pit stops. And this is what we call the money stop. This is going to be the pit stop pressure on the crews of whether or not you're going to be in the conversation for the win in the closing stages. you got to remember as well, so I believe the five and the one stayed out that extra lap while the the while the, the 03 and the 94 came in on the first round, so... You're absolutely right. 
It was just here's Dylan Poteet just chugging along in last place. Yeah, Poteet's got right side damage as well. I don't know if maybe on that first round of pit stops they might have stopped to repair a little bit of the damage on the right side of that Bass Pro Shops Camaro, but uh, obviously not running very well is Poteet. 13th in the points, so this is not going to be a good points day for him either. And you look at it too, and you realize just how much the draft really means. Charles Sanford didn't qualify very well for this race. He was 23rd, but it shows that in the pack, using the draft, using the slingshots, that he was able to get himself up to the front. And I mean, I think they probably made some adjustments on that car uh, between qualifying and the race, because that car has been doing really well being able to stay out in front. All right, so this would be the fuel window right about here. They're about to complete lap 27, go on to lap 28. So, and there you see Elijah Gordon. First car to start the round of green flag pit stops. I can't, as I can't see, no, uh, Elijah Gordon's in pit lane, but we have a change for the lead, which means that the, uh, the 03 Oh, yeah, Sanford's in. Yep. I didn't see him on the inside there when we were focused on Zorland yet. There you see Shelton's 94, there's the 03 of Sanford, so... Well, we saw before that Zorlin staying out that extra lap didn't help him to get the lead from Sanford. Let's see what happens this time. Oh, he stayed out again. Hmm. Jonathan Zorlin stayed out an extra lap again. Well, what I find interesting about that is, I mean, this is one of those pit roads that has that safer barrier on the outside of pit road as well, so it can be rather congested. So with Charles Samper coming down, a number of drivers being on pit road at the same time, Zorlin might be banking on coming down a little less hectic pit road to maybe gain track position, and now he will... Yes, he will. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was going to come to pit road or not, but he is committing. He will commit to pit road this time. Charles Sanford's gonna stay out. I gotta... uh, Sanford's gonna pass the five here to get his lap back. Now he's gotta complete an entire circuit before Zorlin gets his pit stop done. A couple other drivers actually stayed out there too. Uh, James Qualls stayed out an extra lap. Uh, 22 of Cody Lamas, I think, also had stayed out. The 95 had stayed out. The plant had stayed out, so... Trent Dunham gonna come, I think, settle in second place, possibly. Uh, sure yeah. Shelton. It'll all depend on the five, where the five comes out, but right now, Trent would currently be either second or third. And look how he's got Shelton behind him, so that's very important, too. The one and the 94 were able to make it that they were able to come off pit road together and be together, so they're gonna maybe be able to produce some good speed trying to run down Sanford, if Sanford does take the lead, because Zorlin... Can he get up to speed and get in front of that 0-3? Not quite. He tried, though. He definitely tried. Man. But Zorline's going to come across in second. He's going to see how much time he's going to lose. 195 to 185. He's just going to pull away here. Sanford should have the lead with 10 laps to go. Well, right now, the speed is going to be found in, I think, third and fourth place where Trent and Shelton will cycle around. Actually, I think, yeah, Shelton actually got by Trent and gapped the one a little bit. So now that duo is not nose to tail. And James Qualls is going to cycle around in fifth. What a comeback for that car. That car had damage earlier. Kyle Matthews is up in fourth. So a lot of drivers with strategies late in this might get a top ten out of it. That's very true. And you never know. For all we know, uh, for all we know, maybe they didn't put enough gas in. Maybe that's what they're hoping right now is hoping for a caution flag at this point, or, or for Charles Sanford to just run into some lap traffic. Well, I mean, the fuel window, like we said, was 13 to 14 laps. These guys pitted with about 12 laps. Remember, also with uh, Qualls and uh, Zorlin, they stayed out an extra two laps, so they would only have had to put about 10 to 11 laps of fuel in the car, which meant maybe a little bit quicker of a pit stop. That's possible. Right now, Sanford's best friend's at start-finish line, because every lap he ticks away means one less lap for second on back to run him down. Yep. And he's closing in on that 31 of Dylan Poteet there, tail end of the lead lap. That could also allow him a little bit of draft and make his lap times a little bit faster if he gets there. Elijah Gordon, the 24, also just ahead.
They're going to be racing side by side up ahead of him there between Poteet and Gordon. And that will allow Sanford even more to close the gap up on those two and utilize the benefit of their draft. And looking top left. Oh, wow. He gained four tenths that time on Zorlin. So now the big question is going to be if and when Charles Sanford does catch those two drivers ahead, Poteet and Gordon, will they be a help or a hindrance? Because Sanford might be a little bit faster than them. Both those drivers, uh, I think, have, have some damage, which has uh, caused them to be trapped back where they are. And if he has to try and get around them, is that going to slow down his lap times enough for Zorlin to be able to run him down? And it looks like Zorlin might be actually getting reeled in for second place. Yeah, it does. It looks like it. But the question is, will Shelton just pull out and go for it, or will she just try to push him to get up there? Nope, she's just going to go for it. Got Trent Dunham, James Qualls back there as well. If these four could line up, I don't know if they'd have enough time because when Sanford hits the line, it's five laps to go. And we saw before when I think it was uh, Shelton and Zorlin were lined up trying to run down Sanford two cars to one. They were only gained about two tenths a lap. So right now they would need, what, roughly about uh, 56 laps to run down Sanford? <laughs> Right now, they're all lined up single file, but there's a big gap between all four of them. So this right here might be the best battle on track coming to the checkered flag. But what a performance by S3 Motorsports. We saw, obviously, Shelton out in front early in this one. Sanford took the lead, hasn't looked back. And Kyle Matthews, what a comeback for him. Dead last in the points right now, running in the sixth position. So all three of the S3 Motorsports cars poised for a top ten run. Right now, poised for a 1-2-6 finish. Charles Sanford just got around the lap cars with no problem. Wow, okay, so I was thinking that they might be a hindrance. Absolutely not. Sanford just put them in his rearview mirror very quickly, and right there, that might have iced it, because not only does he have over a three-second lead, he's now also got two slightly up-to-speed lap cars between himself and Shelton. So I think right now that could be all she wrote. Yep. I mean, even if a caution were to come out right now, the race would end under caution. Yep, absolutely, and there's no doubt that everybody would stay out and not come to pit road because they'd be able to coast under pacing and be able to make it. There's just no way that someone would throw away a top ten finish um, if a caution were to come out. Um, have you? Do you not remember Levi McIntyre in the All Star Open? Well, I do remember that, but that was a non-points race. <laughs> there was there was no playoff position on the line at the time, so are, are you sure? because that the was stakes a were not quite as high. Yeah, well, they, uh, yeah, they were. They were trying to get into the All-Star race. I'm aware of that, but that's a million dollars. It pays a lot more if you win a championship. <laughs> I don't know where that money's coming from. Let's bear in mind, too, that Charles Sanford is not only trying to win here at Michigan, but he's also trying to tie Dylan Young for most wins this season, trying to become the second two-time winner, which uh, more than likely would all but lock himself up a spot in the chase. Yeah, it would. As he's coming through turns three and four, he's going to see the white flag with one lap to go here at Michigan. And I mean, you know, you just got to give a shout out to guys like James Qualls, Kyle Matthews, fifth and sixth, Cole Deaver down there ninth. And how about William Brock cracking the top ten here in the closing stages? But they're all chasing Sanford, and Sanford's saying, catch me if you can. <laughs> it was so hilarious if we just ran out of gas. Blows a tire. <laughs> engine failure. I would laugh so hard if he just went into turn four and his engine blew up. <laughs> well, from wrecking his teammate at, at Auto Club trying to get a, tr trying to be the best finishing SP Motorsports car, to two-time winner Charles Sanford wins at Michigan. One-two finish for S3 Motorsports here today. Yep, one-two-six. So, and a Motors dominating performance there for Sanford. I mean, pretty much, uh, I think he took the lead back around lap 9, lap 10, and he never gave it up, even after two cycles of green flag pit stops. Yep. 
Trent well, Dunham's going to stay in the top 10 in points with a third place run. Shelton might actually crack the top 20 in the standings with her runner up. And James Qualls, I mean, that car looked like it was going to be in the same boat as a lot of the drivers that had the right side damage, like Poteet and Gordon, who finished the lap down. And you can still see the battle scars on the right side of his machine, but that strategy on the last round of pit stops comes away with a fifth place run and a consistent run today for Jonathan Zorlin as well. He was up in the top five just about the entire race. Yeah, Jonathan Zorlin, it's this is actually really really good for him as I'm gonna save the results here. Um But yeah, Char you know, Charles Sanford good win, Jessica Shelton second, Trent Dunham third, Jonathan Zorline fourth, James Qualls, Kyle Matthews. Jake Smith, O'Neill Bolivan, Daniel Bouchard, and Alexander Rowe round out your top ten. Uh, wow, only three rookies finished in the top ten. Yeah, it's kind of surprising, too, because when you go to super speedways and tracks like this, the faster speedways, you kind of expect that's going to be a big opportunity for rookies to shine. So a lot of veteran experience up there in the top ten for this one. Huh, look at 13th through 22nd. Yeah, and I'm also noticing as well that, you know, a couple of drivers who really didn't talk a lot about today – Getting semi-decent runs, though, to keep themselves in a pretty good position in the point standings. Carter Freeze in 13th. He was third in points. Andrew Davis finishing uh, in the – I just lost his name. There he is, 16th. He came into this race second in points. And, of course, we were talking earlier about Joshua Sakuli near the rear of the field. He was able to combat the poor – qualifying position to finish 19th so I don't know if he'll keep the points lead but at least making a somewhat good run out of uh, poor qualifying results for a couple of drivers that came in running really well in the points oh my what happened to Tony Green I think he retired due to a camshaft issue unless the game's lying yeah well obviously smart ass <laughs> but, but um man he was just running in the top 10 we were just talking about him earlier yeah, tough break for a couple of Penske engines down there, too. Johnny Gardner and Nathan Hudson both falling a lap down, so I'm not certain what exactly happened with them. I don't think they made it on gas. I think they had to come back for a third pit stop right at the end. It could have been, because we saw the 24 and the 31 get put a lap down, but uh, didn't know what happened to uh, Gardner and Hudson. Now, look at Dylan Young. Started first, finished 36th. I mean, that car, just from the get-go, looked like it wasn't handling well. He dropped from first back to fifth in the first two or three laps, so I think that just told the story, and uh, it just got worse as the day went on. Yep. Up, oh, and as you can see where the rest of the drivers finished, Charles Sanford is in victory lane, celebrating his second win of the season. I want to thank Seth so much for joining me up here in the booth. Seth, it's always fun to co-commentate races like this. Absolutely. I mean, that's why we love auto clubs, why we like Michigan. I mean, there's a lot of room to race. Usually it comes down to pit strategy, and this one certainly did, going coast to coast, green to checker. Absolutely. No no yellow flags in this race. That's what's, I guess that was good, maybe kind of a boring race because it didn't really jumble up the field. Yeah, it's typical, it's typical two-mile racetrack. Yep. Alrighty, so I'm Michael Norman, the voice of the Budweiser All Pro Series with uh, Mr. NNS CRA himself. This has been a production of the NNS CRA Offline Racing at its best, saying, until we meet again. Reese's!